Good day, folks! Welcome to this Forza video. We'll be helping out the new players by explaining 10 helpful tips that will help out those players a lot. Uh, they're quite uh, helpful, so, and it's just my side of how I believe it, in my opinion, whatever you like to call it. I did one of these before and it wasn't the best, so I'm going to make it a bit more simple this time. Anyway, so play on Skirmish, uh, be on the Team 1 side, normal difficulty. I'll put on easy so I can actually explain and um yeah now for the new players I'll go for an easy commander I'll go for hurricane basically okay so whatever match you play on you either start on team one or team two which is left or right the first tip I have for the new players is to always immediately place your mine or the tech first is one of the first things you ever do in forts is you get the opportunity once you have enough freezes for it so either one you start off with it's armory armory or, or workshop because you don't want to spend too long getting weapons or it's basically researching or building tech it's the same thing but uh, by doing that you get a third mine if you choose to get a mine so you get more earlier anyways it doesn't really matter in my opinion but if you're, if you're a different player, immediate to advance, it does kind of apply. At any rate. Now the second tip I have for players uh, is to not just randomly fire the gunner. Is you just basically sell it. That's simple. Firing the gunner is basically useless in forts. Uh, because bullets just simply, just they just pretty much do nothing. Just sell the gunner. It's that simple. Because if you just fire the gunner... And it just it tells your opponent that you're new to forts anyways. Now for the third tip uh, for forts is you want to avoid placing down too much for it. Now as you can see I'm already floating on resource but you know it's, it's for video purposes. But basically what I mean is that a lot of these new players and what you might do in your first few matches is you might do something like this. It costs the resources though, you can see how much it takes, and as you can see on the right side, you're making 17 per second. Not a great idea for this. You only want to place down enough wood where it's necessary, so you can have another spot for your tech. If, if you actually need that spot, like this, you don't need to bid up further. But on this map, you may, t you may need to for extra mines, basically. Now the next tip I have uh, is the just avoid placing down too many repair stations. I've seen enough new players that just, they just spam the base of repair stations. Not all over the place, but everywhere basically. But you need to, you know, get used to pressing R enough, which basically repairs. It's it's a it's a habit you have because your players do not realize they're on fire. Uh, that applies with the if your opponent has firebirds, but however fire can spread, and you may not know what the alarm is in the background. But no, your cores are better explored if you don't repair the fire, basically. So one repair station is enough, because you're not even used to it, just place it down. I mean, it's automatically. But don't spam too many, though. That's one thing, though. The next tip I have is the um, place down windmills. Now, I should have done this uh, earlier. But it grants you power. Well, it doesn't. It just gives you power. Basically, right, right here. Oh, my opponent is phantom because it's space dispute interesting now versing a bot by the way and see the windmills are built and they basically well they generate your power basically which is important because other tech and weapons require that amount anyways next tip next tip is do not leave your core exposed so let's say for an example uh, if I just remove this uh, storage here Let's say your your core was uh, one wood away from one piece of wood protection, or if it doesn't even have any protection at all, this is one of the things because players don't they tend to forget that their core is exposed and it could be sniped or you know or one shotted, which means game over. So you want to have protection, not just uh, not one piece of protection, no one piece of wood. No, you need more, like this. 
this should be enough. Or, if you're smart and you worked this out earlier, you could do something like this. More layers. But I'll do that in another video for intermediate or experienced uh, tips. The next tip I have is, I always have pre and tier. Players do not know this because uh, a lot of players, um, they always get, and it's not just new players, also a lot of intermediate or experienced players, uh, they just get new crushed. And two nukes fly in and they just ruin your day completely. So to avoid that, always a few machine gunners. Uh, you know, they have a door or not. Can be placed here. In case anything flies in the sky like a rocket, a missile, an EMP, or warheads. Well, as long as you have anti air ready, your opponents cannot surprise you. See? That's an example right there. The next tip, and I'm on another, another map right now, but uh, the next tip for new players is do not make your fort too heavy. A lot of them don't know this, but usually, as I was new to forts, I used to like making towers, something like this, but you know, obviously bigger than that. But yeah, a lot of players don't know this because they build out and they don't realize the red uh, flashy wood thingies down here for this to... Uh, as you can see, when this flashes, it's about to break. And some players forget about that and they uh, collapse the base if they are unlucky. The next tip is, is know your commander. When in forts, you have the option to disable your commander, but in most games, well, the commander's turned on. It's, why would you disable the commander? But anyways, there's 15 to choose from if you include the DLC, but if you know the DLC is 12 commanders. Hurricane, Overdrive, Architect, the three easiest commanders, basically. I think, though. But anyways, if you know your commander and you found the commander you're your best at, that's when you know your commander, and that's what I mean. So anyways, if you like building or reinforcing your base, it's much more cheaper because the passive, you can build faster with this commander. And when it's active, when it gives you the option, due to enough fire and conflict, it can give you more options and build much more faster. The next tip is, know what you're doing. When you're playing forts and you have this space, you want to know what you're doing. Don't just randomly build just for the sake of it. If you do not have an idea to verse your opponent, because that's what uh, Forts is about, battling your opponent on the other side of the mirrored base, eh, you'll most likely lose the fight, basically. So, before the match starts, you must have an idea in mind, and it's what you want to build. And when you have that, you're more focused on what you're doing. Otherwise, if you don't know what you're doing, you just have to pick up one eventually. Make the quickest way to pick up weapons, simply by placing an armory and getting rockets in a simple door right there. If you have no time to start your base and everything's all messy, you'll just have to go and fall on offensive. But make sure your course are uh, protective though. The final tip in forts is to not give up. Basically what I mean by that is if you don't know how to play this game, or you think that in every single match you verse, if you don't have a friend to play with, or you're just versing random players, most of the time, if they are least experienced, you'll most likely not win every match, and you might say, eh, this doesn't seem like the game for me. But no, the way I learned forts is you play enough with friends, and I do suggest you find a friend if you don't know, if you don't have any friends that play this, but find someone that can you play forts, which basically means don't give up. You'll get there eventually, as I did. Uh, it doesn't seem much as of a learning curve, it's really easy once you understand it. It's quite fun every time though. But anyways, those are my basic 10 tips for new players of forts if they ever get into the game. And I hope it does help out. I might have other videos showing uh, uh, tips for the advanced uh, or immediate uh, experienced uh, players of forts, but we'll see about that. Anyways, if you enjoyed this and you think it was helpful, then please give it a like and subscribe to tune in for more. If I ever do, I'll play more of these. And if you ever Want to find any players to help you with forts, there's the forts main discord server, which is below in the description, and there's also my server, which are some forts players there. But anyways, thanks for watching, 
and I shall see you next time in another video. So until then, have a good day.